30 minutes, 30 minutes, Oscar Peterson. 1962 Verve release, originally the jazz soul of Oscar Peterson, that's the gravy waltz. You can also find it where I got it on the Ultimate Ray Brown 1999 Verve compilation. Uh, that's Ed Thigpen on drums, Ray Brown on bass, Oscar Peterson on piano. My guest, uh, Brother Tom Porter, from uh, you hear him regularly on in Washington, D.C., on, on Pacifica's uh, station, WPFW, Tom. Thanks so much. You, when we were coming out of the break, you were making the point. Uh, we have to learn how to punish those that don't support us. Exactly. For instance, I can't think of his name, but he's a he's a congressman who got elected uh, with the help of the black vote and, and rode Obama's coattail. Uh, one of the problems that Obama has is many people within his own party are not supporting his initiatives, mm -hmm. and this guy uh, did not support the health care initiative. Mm -hmm. Well. What, we don't need to vote for him. I mean, we don't need to, you know, uh, I mean, you, you have to learn how to punish your enemies. And one way you punish enemies politics is not vote for them. And there, there are a number of black politicians who are in that position now, some members of Congress, mm -hmm. who are not going to get, probably will not get reelected uh, because they haven't done what it is that their constituents constituency thought that they should do, and people just not going to vote for them. And I think uh, that's why Barack Obama is in a panic now, and it's really kind of disingenuous for him to come around now courting the black folk when people were waiting on him to give some sign that he, in fact, recognized that black people really did exist and had interests that he ought to pay attention to. So uh, what if he were running this year, uh, he would probably not get the the same percentage of the black vote or young vote or, or or progressive votes that he got in his last election because he just simply has not paid attention to his base. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And which is something that the Republicans are very adept at. They understand what side their bread is buttered on and they, they ensure that they pay attention. In fact, there was an article uh, in to, uh, yesterday's post that uh, that minority leader John Boehner has given three hundred and twenty thousand dollars to of his uh, uh, campaign war ch oh wrong article of his campaign war chest here it is Boehner reaches out to the Tea Party uh, he has transferred more than three hundred and twenty thousand dollars of his business funded war chest to 39 avowedly anti-establishment candidates who have been endorsed by elements of the Tea Party. The Republicans understand how to do that. In fact, there is also an article in uh, the Washington Post today. Uh, where would we go? Where would we go? Where would we go? President Clinton is baffled. According to the Washington Post, his friends say he's in disbelief that in the closing weeks of the midterm of campaign, Democrats have failed to articulate a coherent message on the economy and worse, have allowed themselves to become human pinatas. But they're, 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 they're responding they're in a defensive posture rather than an offensive posture. You know, they're in disarray. Uh, Harry Reid may very well uh, lose. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Nancy Pelosi, whatever happens, will probably will not She's be the speaker, speaker speaker of 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 the House. I mean, the 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 Tea Party or, or the Republicans, um, in in one way, when I'm really sinister, I say, well, let them come, mm -hmm. because what will happen is that will be gridlock in Washington. Uh, if you think the economic crisis is bad now, because there's no gridlock in China. Mm -hmm. There's no gridlock in Brazil. There's no gridlock in India. There's no gridlock in Russia to the degree that there is here. Um, and when you see the moves that the Chinese are making, whether it's, uh, it's uh, protecting rare earth minerals <laughs> and not selling to the rest of the world, not devaluing their currency as they you would want them to do. Mm -hmm. The the countries that are protecting themselves against really uh, the 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 movement of U.S. capital. As you see, what these speculators do, and a Wall Street banker 
as a banker in this country, outside of this country, these investors are speculators, and they move like locusts into a country with hot money, and when they siphon off everything they can, they move the money out, mm -hmm. and they leave the country in ruins. Well, there's some countries that are hip to that mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so if you have gridlock, which will, which will happen, they're going to try and over, overturn the health bill. They're going to try and whatever they can do, because you see, the Tea Party and that group of people, they don't really have an agenda. They don't have anything that they're for. They're just against. They're just against, you know. The the analogy that I and I think many others have done have drawn this are the Dixiecrats in forty eight. Are we could we very well see in the Republican Party if if Sarah Palin is successful and and her minions get or some of them anyway get put in office and she now and she then starts to hold more clout than she has now, do we possibly see the Republican Party being moved? further to the right or do we see a division within the party as we had in the democratic party in the south with the dixiecrats in 48 well i think the 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 analogy of the dixiecrats and, and the tea party which is really kind of interesting because most members of the tea party including the leadership are well off more well off than most americans mm -hmm. but they would have you believe that they're for the little man right when in fact uh they really represent corporate interests. Uh, Tom Tancredo. Right. You know, you, you take all of these people, Home Depot. Mm -hmm. I mean, we ought to, if we start making a list of the people he, who we shop with <laughs> and have credit cards with who really don't support our interests with our money, we would have some major boycotts. Mm -hmm. now. I see that as... Tom DeLay is another one. Right. Mm -hmm. I see that as a fault of our leadership. And mm -hmm. of course, one of the problems you have in... In the in, in in the black community is is the absence of committed and serious leadership. Uh, the people who I don't want to call any names, but uh, there's a guy Corny, and then there's another guy Michael. These guys have become entertainment. Mm -hmm. I mean, whenever you want to hear somebody talk slick and hip about the black condition, you call one of these guys, mm -hmm. and they say something crazy. On the other hand, Reverend Jackson uh, and Reverend Sharpton. And even Ben Jealous, uh, I mean, they're just really out of it. They provide no leadership. They have no agenda. Uh, and so black people are in a defensive posture. But the, the, the thing that we have to really be concerned about the Tea Party, not so much who they are, but what they represent. And they represent a growing tendency towards fascism in this country. And, and it will increase as as we begin to see some of the things that we saw in 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 in, in Greece, you know, the loss of pensions on the part of people. See they talk about they don't like Obama's health care bill when when all of their people start not having any health care mm -hmm. with no jobs and they're not gonna be able to blame China forever. Quite frankly, China doesn't give a damn. Talk about your point uh, elaborate more on your point about the Tea Party and fascism, uh, because they claim to be, you know, anti-government. There's too much government in our lives, and we need to we we need our country back, which I think is more of a of a racial connotation than than a oh, than a governmental connotation. But talk about the the fascism aspect of the Tea Party. Well, you know what 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 you have on the on the on, on the fascism is. Uh, one of the things you begin to see is that the society gets fused into the military. And you would be surprised across this country where former military people are working. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, ex-military people, their heads of transportation departments and what have you. So you have that mentality. What you have... And don't you, don't you also have corporate interests that start to impact government policy? On, well, without a doubt. And you have these very conservative... Corporate interests, mm -hmm. uh, eBay. I mean, I'm talking about the leadership, Home Depot, uh, Microsoft, and Microsoft, What's Amway. Mm -hmm. You have these big companies, and they have a fascist tendency inherent in there because they actually believe in the meritocracy. So if you don't have anything, you don't merit it, and those who do have uh, merit it. That 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 sounds to me like a, um, uh, with the mega church and the whole 
um, uh, what's the I want to say the for profit theology, but right. um, what's it, what's it called? The um, prosperity ministry. Right, right, exactly, hey, exactly. But what you have is a disguised form of racism, which runs throughout. Uh, you know, we want to take our government back. The character caricatures of uh, the Barack Obama as a as a monkey, as and, a monkey, as, you know, as a terrorist, uh, uh, as a fat, as as a socialist, and Hitler. Right, Barack Obama's. One of his problems is, is something that my father taught me a long time ago. He said, he said, Tommy, if you, if you want to get a white man's attention, ignore him. Barack didn't, I mean, Obama, Obama didn't ignore them. He should have ignored They're never going to vote for him, so he should have ignored them. But he tried to respond mm -hmm. uh, to them. The other thing is... And he should have investigated them, too. Oh, he should have. The other thing is, you aren't going to be able to convince them of anything. What you need to do is to convince your base of the danger and he's waited too, too late long to do that. Too long to do that. It's forty one, forty one past the hour, Dr. Wimmer Leon here. You're going inside the issues here on the power. Tom Porter is my guest and you can hear this analysis regularly on in Washington D C on WPFW Pacifica's uh, station in D C and we're Hey folks, you gotta get involved, but as Tom said, you gotta you got to know how to get involved, and you got to also know how to stay involved. And that's what we're trying to get you to understand here. The Gravy Waltz is what you're hearing, Ray Brown, off of the ultimate Ray Brown 99 Verve. Do yourselves a favor. Keep it locked right here on The Power. Yeah. 